Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a parametric cinder block. This asset can easily be dragged and placed into the scene. In the properties, you're not only able to adjust the size, but we'll add some prompts that will allow you to adjust the quantity of bricks to form a wall. We'll also include a prompt that calculates how many total bricks are used in this wall. Now, I'm going to be saving this asset to a new library that will be available in the next release, which is called the Assembly Library. Typically, if you created a custom assembly, we had to save it to the collection library, which was kind of a pain. And so I just added this new library here that will allow you to maintain your own custom parametric assemblies. Now in the first release, the assembly library doesn't support custom placement functionality, meaning here if we drag and place one of these into the scene, and we wanted to add another one, it's not gonna automatically snap to where it would need to be placed, I mean, you could, you know, place one by one and form a brick wall this way, but it's a little bit tedious to do so. And so instead of placing one brick at a time here in the assembly properties, we are going to add some prompts that will allow you to adjust the quantity of this to form a wall. And again, we're going to be showing you how to add this prompt that will calculate the total quantity of bricks that are used. It will also be really helpful if you watch the training series on creating custom parametric assemblies that I released a little while back before watching this video, just so you understand the basic concepts. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and show you how to create this type of an asset. So this is the model that we're gonna be turning into a parametric assembly. We're not gonna go through the process of creating this model because there's a bunch of modeling tutorials out there for Blender, and this is a pretty simple mesh. And so we will just go over the process of turning this model into a parametric assembly. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go and add in the assembly, and we're gonna go ahead and call it cinder block. We'll click okay. And now that's added the structure of the cinder block assembly and we need to parent our model to this so we're just going to go and drag this hold shift and parent it to the base point and now with that done we want to make sure that the assembly is the exact same size as our model and so we're going to go and select the z dimension object we're going to snap this to the top select the x object snap it to the end here and then the y dimension object snap it here and so now if we open up our sidebar panel with the end key our dimensions match the model perfectly. And so now if we want to make this parametric, we'll notice that we have this center support here for this cinder block, which is in the middle of this model. And so we're going to go ahead and create a new empty in our objects here. So we'll go ahead and add in a new empty object, and this is going to be the mid X object. And so we'll go ahead and add that. And now we'll drop down the mid X properties and I'm gonna set the size to be one inch just to make it a little bit smaller. It doesn't really matter, it's just so it is a little bit less distracting. And so now for this X location here, we want this to be right in the center of the model, but we want it to be a formula that will always evaluate to the center of the X dimension. And so we're gonna add in a driver on the X location property. And then here, if we Make sure we have that object selected and go to the logic panel. Here we can see that X location driver. And so now we're just going to go and delete the extra variable. And let's go ahead and add in the X dimension of our assembly. And we'll click OK. And so now we're just going to go and copy that variable, paste it here, and divide it by 2. And so now that's always in the center of our assembly, which is exactly what we want. So now with that done, we're going to go ahead and go back to the objects and then here in the mesh object we'll drop this down and here in the data tab we'll go into edit mode and now we can start to assign all of the vertices to the different vertex groups and I'm going to do this in wireframe mode and so here we're going to go ahead and grab all of the vertices that we want to assign to the X object, basically the object that's going to move when we change the X dimension of our assembly. And then we're gonna click on this button here to assign those vertices to that vertex group. Then we'll select these vertices in the middle, and that's going to be the mid X object. That's basically gonna move along with the new object that we just created. Here, we'll go ahead and grab all of these vertices that are gonna be connected to the Y dimension object and assign those there. And then we'll select all the vertices on the top 
and assign them to the Z dimension object. Then after that, we'll click connect hooks and we'll just test this out. And so here, if we grab the X dimension and move that, we can see that that changes the size of our mesh and the Y dimension works like we would expect and the Z dimension. And so at this point, our assembly is set up and it's parametric, but we're going to do a few additional things. We're going to make sure, or we're going to add some prompts that will allow us to control the quantity of blocks that it's going to create. And so here in the prompts tab, go and add a new prompt. And here the prompt type is going to be a quantity value. And then the prompt name is going to be block height quantity. And so this is going to be the prompt that controls how many blocks are stacked on top of each other. Then we'll add a new one. It's going to be the block length quantity. Click OK. And then there's going to be one additional prompt that we won't control, but it's just going to calculate how many blocks there are. And so this is going to be the total block quantity. And we'll click OK. And so now that we have the prompts added, we're going to go ahead and add in some drive or some modifiers to this mesh in order for it to array the quantity. And so here in the modifiers tab, here we'll go and collapse these hook modifiers that we added. And we're going to go ahead and add in an array. And so we can see with that array, we can set the count here if we wanted to, to change the quantity. But just to make this a little bit easier to work with, we're going to go ahead and make this property driven by one of these prompts. And so we're just going to go ahead and right click here, add a driver, get rid of that. So there we've added a driver to the count of that array value. And let's go ahead and add in one more array. And this is going to be the Z value. So we're going to go and change the factor. We set this to zero and set the Z value to be one. This will be the array modifier that controls the height of this. And we might want to change the factor right now. The factor is exactly one, which makes it to where we can't really see the seams in there. And so here, if we make this 1.2, 0, 1 maybe. There we go. Now we can see that there is a bit of a gap. And here, if we make this 1.01, .01, there we have it. So now we can kind of see the separation between each of these cinder blocks. And so here we'll go ahead and add a driver to this as well. And then maybe just to add one more modifier, it might be helpful to add a bevel modifier, which that is a bit too much for what I want. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller of a value just to add a small little edge to these cinder blocks as well. So with that done, let's go ahead and um, let's assign these some default values. We'll just set it three by three for right now. And here, if we select on our mesh that has the drivers for the array modifiers that we just added, we'll go to the logic panel. And here we can see the drivers for that array. And so let's go ahead and add in the variables that we need. And so we'll delete these extra variables that we don't need here. And so for that first array modifier, that's going to control how many bricks are stacked lengthwise. Let's go ahead and add in the block length quantity. And we'll copy that variable and we'll paste it here. And there we can see that's been updated. And then here for the height quantity, we'll go ahead and add in the block height quantity copy that into the expression and there we have it so now we have the prompts that we can use to adjust the quantity of the blocks for our wall and the last thing that we want to do is we want to add a driver to this total block quantity that way it automatically calculates the quantity of blocks for us and so the way that we do this, you might think that we would just right click and add a driver to that prompt value. Unfortunately, there's a bug in Blender currently that doesn't allow us to add a driver correctly to these custom properties that we've created. And so to add a driver to this, we go to the logic panel. And then rather than looking at the drivers for the selected object, we want to see the drivers for the prompts. And so here we can see the prompts that we've added. And then here, if we click on the total block quantity, we can click the add driver button here. And so that adds the driver to this prompt. And now the two prompts that we want to use for evaluation is the block height quantity and length quantity. And so now we're just going to take this value and we're going to times it by 
this value. And so now here in the prompts, as we adjust this, you can see that the total block quantity is automatically going to update for us. Now, before we save this to our library, let's go ahead and add a material to this because right now it's just this white material. And I'm just gonna go to my material library and let's see, I have some concrete options in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this rough concrete ground. I think that'll work just fine. I'm gonna assign it to the mesh. And there we have it. So now we at least have a material assigned to our assembly. So that's everything that we need to do. Now let's go ahead and open up our assembly library and we're gonna save this to our library. But just like any of the other libraries in the toy box library, we need to create a category first. And so here we'll just go and call this my assets and click OK. So now we have that one category added and now we can click save assembly to library and the name is cinder block which is great we'll select ok and there we have it so now we have this assembly saved to our library and if we wanted to we can drag this in we can move this around and it's going to use the default settings that we had in there but again we can always just make adjustments to this and reuse this in all of our other future projects and so it not only will adjust from the quantity here but here if we change the dimensions of our cinder block you can see that's going to adjust what we would expect so that's everything that i wanted to show in this video i hope you learned something i'd like to thank you for watching this video i'll be releasing more videos similar to this soon so subscribe to the channel for future updates and i'll see you in the next one